Hello everyone. In our today's video, we are going to start with the uh, next point from the topic is the innate immunity. So as you know, innate immunity is also called as inborn immunity. Inborn immunity. Or it is also a non-specific immunity. Non-specific immunity. Okay, so it is present right from our birth time. Present right from our birth time. Birth time. Okay, so it is present right from our birth time. Okay, so related with this, this innate immunity is a non-specific immunity and it's having some barriers. So related with the next point, is the barrier of the innate immunity. Barriers of innate immunity. So what are the barriers of innate immunity, right? So first of all, barriers means which prevents the entry of that pathogen or that disease-causing agent in our body are called as a barrier. So naturally from the birth time, every individual having a barriers which prevents and protects, the, prevents that organism or that human, pre pre uh, which prevents the entry of microbes, disease-causing agent inside us and protects us from the diseases, right? So these are called the barriers. So we are dealing with the first one is a epithelial surface. The first one is the epithelial surface. Uh, especially the epithelial surface. In an epithelial surface, especially extreme outer and it involves extreme outer an extreme inner epithelial surface, right? Uh, extreme outer side. Extreme outer and inner. Inner surface of our body and body organs, right? So epithelial surface, especially the first one, which is the outermost, is called as a skin. First one is a skin. As you know, this first uh, skin is a first line of defense. It is a first line of defense. Okay, why it is called as a first line of defense? Because our skin protects our underlying tissues, forming a covering. Okay, our skin is a stratified layer. Skin is a stratified layer, and outermost cells are our, our outermost layer is of a keratinized layer. Outermost layer is a keratinized layer, which is made up of a specific protein called as a keratin. Okay, so the skin, especially in skin, is a multi-layered, multi-layered structure. Outermost layer is called as a keratinized layer. Keratinized layer. Okay, this keratinized layer is made up of a specific protein named as a keratin. Okay, this keratin is especially any microbes when try to invade in our body via the skin surface or via this surface, it try to dissolve the surface. But this keratin protein is a very hard and tough protein which the any microbes can't easily break this protein and uh, so we get protected by uh, infection, okay? Invading microbes can't invade in our body uh, because of we have a first line of defense that is the skin. Okay, then the next one, the other skin also having uh, pores, okay? From this pores, especially the sweat, sweat, and the another one is the sebum, is coming out. Okay, from the skin, the sweat and sebum is coming out. 
related with the sweat the sweat contain okay sweat contain a lactic acid it contains a lactic acid while the sebum contains a fatty acid okay both having the lactic acid as well as fatty acid having bactericidal and fungicidal function bactericidal cidal and fungicide okay so in our skin especially the skin is always keep moist because of because of the sebum because of the sebum there is a sebaceous gland this sebaceous gland secretes sebum which contains a fatty acid okay it contains a fatty acid while the sweat as everyone knows the sweat it is a salty okay so increase salt amount the sweat also uh, it also having a lactic acid as well as increase salt salt content is maximum in a sweat so both these the lactic acid salts increase salt and fatty acids are have are bactericidal and fungicidal properties so they naturally kills the bacteria and fungi uh, and uh, so that uh, no any fungus easily can grow on our body okay and which makes this both the sweat and sebum makes our body uh, body skin healthy okay uh, and uh, we are periodically removing by uh, taking bath right okay so this is the another one then the next one is the another one is the mucus now these the next we are turning towards the next one is the mucus so related with the mucus the mucus is present in where it is present it is present in our respiratory tract respiratory tract as well as in a digestive tract digestive tract then urinogenital tract in our urinogenital tract okay so mucus which is especially forming a innermost lining of our passages okay the passages the respiratory passage as you know our nose hmm, the respiratory passage up to the uh, trachea okay it is internally lined by the mucus okay then the next one is the respiratory one and the another one is a urinogenital tract is also lined by the mucus so what is the property of this mucus mucus having number of lytic enzymes it having lytic enzymes okay mucus having lytic enzymes which works on the microbes and kills that microbes by the action of these lytic enzymes clear so listen everyone in a respiratory passage how we will get protected uh, protects our lungs our vital organs so listen carefully in our respiratory passage it begins with the nose and the nostrils are internally lined by the hair follicle as you know hair follicle traps the dust particle as well as in our nasal passage there are the ciliated epithelial cells which beats especially unidirectional way these are the only ciliated cells which are present in our respiratory passage which shows a action and because of that ciliary reaction the whatever the dust particle or any substance which enters in our nasal nasal passage which is removed or swept out from our respiratory passage right so this is about the respiratory okay so another one uh, related with a uh, unidirectional cilia as you know uh, as well as in our respiratory system we sneeze out and also shows a reflex okay especially cough reflex we are showing so in a respiratory system especially the respiratory system consists of unidirectional cilia 
unidirectional cilia okay which swept out the dust particles okay unidirectional cilia which swept out dust as well as microbes out microbes okay as well as in our respiratory passage as you know in a nasal chamber especially we warms our air when uh, what air we inhale inhaled that is warmed okay and because of that the microbes also get killed okay so unidirectional cilia as well as a mm, swept swept out okay we swept out the dust particle as well as microbes at the same time here especially cough reflex cough reflex and sneezing these both cough reflex and sneezing also helps to remove our such a microbes which are present in our body as uh, nowadays we are facing that uh, the covid 19 virus when it invades on in our body at that time the person okay if uh, it enters in any one's body at that time that virus uses the body of that person as a culture medium right so those person who are infected when they cough out or sneeze out or uh, when they talk during that the droplets which are coming out which contains the viruses right so by coughing action we are trying to remove that viruses out as well as that microbes out right so that is a cough reflex as well as we sneeze out sneezing action is generally to remove out the any particle which enters in our body at that time we are showing the sneezing action right so this is all about the uh, respiratory passage right then the next one is the digestive passage so related with everyone is clear with the uh, this respiratory passage now we are turning towards the next one is the digestive pass passage so related with our digestive system digestive passage very interesting this digestive passage starting with mouth up to and ends into starts with mouth and ends into anus whole passage whole passage is internally lined by mucosa membrane which membrane is lined there mucous membrane is lined okay mucosa membrane is there this mucus protects okay protects the uh, passage hmm, from any microbes entry so none of other and no any bacteria or virus uh, can't invade easily in a digestive passage you know that the in a mouth mouth is always wetted with with saliva in saliva as you know the property of saliva no any virus or bacteria can't sustain in in our saliva okay no any virus so the saliva has its own action saliva when we eat food if we have a habit of chewing the food properly not gulping okay so uh, mug out okay so if we have a proper chewing uh, habit when we chew the food at that time appropriate amount of saliva get mixed with the food so what happens because of that the whatever the microbes which if we are eating any contaminated food mm, then that microbes get killed by the action of salivary amylase okay the enzyme which is present in our saliva okay as well as so many another enzymes are also there which break out the microbes which invade in our mouth okay which enters in our body right so this is related with saliva after mouth the food enters into the pharynx 
and parent stool esophagus. Uh, these all the passage having the mucus lining, as well as uh, the mucus lining break, uh, having lytic enzymes, as I previously stated, which tries to break the, uh, kills the microbes. And finally, it enters. Then it enters into the stomach. So what happens in the stomach? In our stomach, there is a dilutation. This acid works on microbes and kills the microbe. By the acidic action, the microbes get killed into the stomach. Then, that means the another one. Here is the saliva. Now, here is the dilutation. Now, in the intestine. In intestine, especially the medium is alkaline. Which medium is there? Alkaline medium is present. Here is the acidic medium. In stomach, the acidic medium. By the action of acid, the micro, some microbes get killed and remaining microbes which enters into the intestine which also get killed by the action of alkaline enzymes are there. There are so many enzymes, digestive enzymes which are released by the pancreas as well as by the liver which works on that hmm, and kills the microbes. So this is all related with the in, uh, digestive system, right? Then, even though the or, uh, the anal lining, anus, okay, just inside the anal sphincter, it is inner lining, uh, internally lined by the mucus. So those microbes which try to invade via the anus, they also get killed by the action of the lytic enzymes which are present in the mucus and that mucus which is lining the anal site, right? So this is all related with the intestinal tract. Okay, then the next one are the digestive tract. Then the next one is a urinogenital tract. So urinogenital tract which invades, which encloses the urine part and a genital part. So this is so. so urinogenital tract. Genital tract. This term is used in case of male only, right? Urinogenital tract. This concept we are using in a male, we have completed it in a uh, previous topic, right? So, especially urine or urine. The flushing action of urine clean out the bacterial infection. Okay, when uh, any person urinates, at that time, the flushing action cleans the urethra. Okay, because of this urine, uh, which kills the, which has a property of bactericidal. Okay, it has a bactericidal property. Property. Okay, the next one is a, uh, Mucus, which is inner lining the urethra, okay, which uh, kills the microbes, which kills the microbes. Then the next one, in case of female, especially in case of female, the vagina. In case of female, the vagina is, yes, everyone, it is acidic. The acidic medium of the vagina kills most of the microbes which kills most of the microbes, as well as the next one, the semen. In case of semen, the semen contains spermine and zinc. In case of male, semen is released, which contain spermines. Spermine and zinc. Okay, these two, spermine and zinc, which are present in the semen, these are also having antibacterial property. These are antibacterial. Okay, so the uh, chances of infect getting infected is very less 
because of the cement contains formalin and zinc which has a antibacterial property clear everyone so this is about the reproductive tract as well as the uh, urinal um, urinal genital tract completely urinal genital tract so uh, so this is all related with this part then the next one is the another one is the cerumen barriers we are studying the barriers how we are preventing the bacteria and virus entry in our body okay so every opening of our body having a fluid a little amount of fluid fluid okay or substance fluid or a substance so the next one is a cerumen cerumen is simply called as a ear wax it is called as a ear wax okay which is a sticky material sticky substance it is a sticky substance present in our ear okay the cerumen also having lytic enzymes it also having lytic enzymes so especially those microbes which tries to invade from our ear they get they get killed by the action of the lytic enzyme now the another one is a tear ear wax is present in our uh, cerumen is present in our ear uh, then the tears tears so related with the tears it contains lacrimal tears are nothing but the lacrimal secretion lacrimal secretion Tears are nothing but the lacrimal secretion, and this lacrimal secretion contains lysozymes, lysosomes. Sorry, lysosomes. Okay, as you know, the lysosomes are the suicidal bacteria which having number of lytic enzymes inside it. So, any infection or when the microbes invades in our eyes at that time. uh our eye the especially the lacrimal gland which is present at this side at this side okay of the both the eye which especially secretes the lacrimal secretion this lacrimal secretion is nothing but the tears every time you have recognized that you can find out that or you can observe every time when we are talking with any person or after some seconds our eyelids get closed okay that is because of when we close our eyelids the lacrimal fluid is completely covers the eyeball so the lacrimal secretion is secreted and it is it is then stored into the lacrimal sac which is present at this region right everyone so this lacrimal secretion which having lysozymes when any micro it dust enters in our body at that time the lacrimal secretion increases and it kills the microbes which is invaded okay then the next one after this the another one uh, so here we complete the first part is the epithelial secretions uh, epithelial surface part okay then the next one is the antimicrobial substances in blood and other tissue body tissues now so antimicrobial especially the antimicrobial substances mineral substances okay 
which are present in substance in blood and tissue blood and tissues okay so which are the antimicrobial substances so listen carefully so especially related with the antimicrobial substances there are plenty of the enzymes which are secreted more than 30 different enzymes are secreted only by our biggest gland in our body is the yes everyone jk question yes it's a liver okay so as you know our liver this is our liver suppose this is Okay, so this is our liver. This liver contains hepatocytes. Our liver contains hepatocytes, and this hepatocytes especially uh, secretes so many proteins, so many proteins which are enzyme, um, especially so many proteins which are enzyme in nature works as an enzyme okay works as an enzyme so more than 30 listen more than 30 different proteins okay more than 30 different proteins are especially uh, present in our blood proteins are released into the blood these are present in our blood and majority of these proteins are secreted by our hepatocytes. Which secretes are hepatocytes, right? Uh, LFT, every time when any dysfunctioning in our body occurs, at that time, doctors suggest us to do LFT, liver function test. And this liver function test is especially uh, because the liver secretes so many enzymes so many enzymes which are proteins in, in nature and majorly these proteins which are present in blood these are in inactive form these are in inactive form right when these proteins get activated these get stimulated only when any microbes invade in our body any microbes invades in our body which stimulates this inactive protein and this inactive proteins get activated get activated clear everyone how it works clear everyone so when any microbes which invade our body every person so those person who get affected they only having the proteins in their blood no 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 it is present in everyone's blood. Every individual is having more than 30 different proteins which are flowing in the bloodstream. These are in inactive form. But when they get activated, when and when only, the microbes invade in our body. When the microbes in our, in, invades in our body accordingly, the protein get activated that protein get activated especially there are one uh, one very interesting example is interferon okay especially the uh, one is a interferon so related with the interferon okay among this the best example is of a interferon So what is this interferon? It is antiviral property. Hmm? Interferon has a antiviral property. So especially interferon mechanism, it is an antiviral chemical. Especially it is an antiviral chemical. So, understand the mechanism of interferon, how it works. Yeah. So, suppose this is our host cell. 
This is our host cell. Hmm? When any virus invades our body, suppose this is a virus. Okay, this inhales the this cell. Now this cell, the host cell, become affected cell. This get affected cell. Okay, this is the virus. This is the virus. Okay, this virus enters in our host cell. That means this cell now get affected cell. So what happens, especially during this? The virus which enters in this body, uh, in this cell, it uh, replicates after this. I'm just drawing the flow chart. Okay. The virus replicates itself. And number of virus will get formed. It gets replicates. So here is the, the virus replicates in. Replicates in affected cell. Affected cell. So what happened? Okay, this affected cell now releases a chemical named as interferon. So this affected cell release a substance, a chemical named as interferon. Interferon. Okay, it releases the interferon. So these are the interferon molecules. Okay, then what happened? Now this cell is the affected one. So interferon molecules get released. So what these interferon molecules do? Okay, it goes to the another cell. These are the another cells of our body, which are non-affected cells, right? These non-affected cells having receptors. These non-affected cells having receptors. I'm just drawing one or two receptors in every one. Okay. These are the, suppose these are present everywhere, right? On their surface. So these are the receptors. These are the unaffected cells. These are the unaffected cells. Okay, so what happens? This interferon molecules comes and bind to this receptors. To this receptors. So what happened? The receptors which are receiving the yes virus that receptors already get blocked. That already get blocked. So there is no yes no any anti receptor to receive the virus. So these cells by releasing the damaged or affected cells. When the virus enters in them, the virus, as its nature, it replicates inside the living cell. Virus is a non-living, okay? It replicates. It, uh, uh, this cell is now a cultural medium uh, for that virus. This virus grows into this, in this cell. It go, grows inside. Okay, during that, this affected cell release the interferon. This interferon then goes and binds on the receptors of another unaffected cell. And this what happened? These unaffected cells, hmm? unaffected cell releases virus blocking enzyme. These cells form a virus blocking enzyme. blocking enzyme. These are forming the virus blocking enzyme. So what happened? Because of this virus blocking enzyme, it especially breaks the viral mRNA. It, really, it especially breaks the virus, viral mRNA. Virus blocking enzyme breaks. Hmm? 
Brits mRNA. It breaks mRNA. As it breaks mRNA, that means it, it doesn't allow the viral replication. It prohibits. It prohibits. It prohibits viral replication. So, if the virus doesn't replicate, then the number of viruses is very less and our body can, can destroy that less amount of virus very quick and efficient way. Okay, so listen everyone carefully. This is the interferon mechanism. As you know, our body, we are dealing with the antimicrobial substance in our blood and tissues as well as the substances which are released by the cells. So, very interesting example uh, is the interferon. Majorly, our liver is the largest gland in our body. It contains hepatocytes. The liver cells are called as hepatocytes, which releases number of proteins, which are especially uh, non, uh, <coughs> which are especially the enzymes, enzyme in nature. These are in uh, these are basically poured into the bloodstream. So every individual having such a proteins which are present in our blood and these proteins, okay, these proteins are especially present, are in inactive form. When, uh, when any microbes in our, invades our body, when it enters in our body and according to that only after invasion of that microbes, the that inactive proteins get activated okay then it get activated so especially listen one of the example is given in our book that is a uh, interferon the interferon is the antiviral chemical it is released by our own cells interferon is the antiviral uh, chemical which is released in uh, by our own cells uh, especially those cells which get affected by the viruses. So the virus, when enters in our body, uh, uh, when enters or invades the cell, so this host cell get affected cell. Okay, invaded virus. Uh, it having. Okay, so this virus use this host cell as a culture medium and replicates and replicates, that means forms their multiple copies inside that cell. While this, when this process is going inside this uh, host cell, that is affected, affected one, this affected cell releases a chemical named as interferon. Okay, this interferon then goes to other unaffected cells. This unaffected cells having receptors these receptors get blocked with the interferon, okay, which forms a viral, viral blocking enzyme. This viral blocking enzyme, this complex, whatever the interferon and receptor complex formed, which forming a viral blocking enzyme, and this viral blocking enzyme breaks the viral mRNA. As it breaks the viral mRNA, means it stops or prohibits the viral replication. So, especially interferon is an antiviral, having antiviral property because it breaks the mRNA and prohibits the viral replication. Clear, everyone? Now we are turning towards the next point is the inflammatory response. Okay. Inflammation. What do you mean by inflammation? Yes. What do you mean by inflammation? Inflammation means redness. Inflammation means swelling. What are the properties of inflammation? Uh, swelling. 
then redness then intense burn and heat burn and heat okay these are the features of the inflammation inflammation is nothing but the swelling okay swelling occurs to particular in, uh, site it is also one of the barrier of innate immunity so inflammation is one of the barrier of our innate immunity so inflammation is characterized by the swelling redness intense burn and heat so what happened for example uh, i have a tooth infection suppose hmm? what happens during that um, my inflammation occurs swelling occurs after that swelling intense burn we feel intense burn redness okay and heat okay so these features are generally shown by the and you know, happens you know inflammation so what happens during inflammation during inflammation a microbe suppose this is a microbes or this is causing agent microbes hmm, which damages our suppose this is our lining cheek wall this microbes enters during it entry it breaks this wall okay it breaks this wall and enters inside right hmm. so so what happens during that during that our cells this tissues okay this outermost tissue and the underlying tissues get affected get damaged okay this affect this cells or tissues the cells and tissues cells and tissues get damaged okay underlying this layer there is a connective tissue as you know there is a connective tissue so especially in a connective tissue there are the mast cells especially i am mentioning the name of the cell named as a mast cell very important cell mast cell this mast cell releases the histamine okay damage when it get damaged especially damage i am mentioning a damaged mast cell releases a chemical named as a histamine histamine this histamine get released by the mast cell which is a vasodilation property okay histamine has a vasodilation property vasodilation as vasodilation means vaso means vessels and dilation means dilate okay so vasodilation occurs so ultimately because of vasodilation blood flow increases clear everyone B blood flow increases and because of this blood flow increases it feels a you know, redness and heat hmm? redness and heat because of this as well as because of this the capillary permeability also increases permeability increases what is the what happens if the capillary permeability increases this capillary if the capillary permeability get increases the diaphoresis phenomena is shown okay the diaphoresis phenomena is shown and especially because of that the macrophage as well as neutrophils macrophage especially i am mentioning the macrophage okay can squeeze out okay can squeeze out and goes at the site of infection goes at the site of infection and in a result it increases the number of macrophage at that area okay as the number of macrophage increases at that particular site of infection it indicates the swelling 
it indicates the swelling and pain and pain okay so indicates swelling and pain so especially listen carefully how the inflammation works inflammation works to cure the damage hmm? here everyone uh, so concentrate on the point so inflammation is indicated by or characterized by swelling redness intense heat and burn okay so how it happens when any microbes invades in our body at that time it damage our uh, outermost layer as well as underlying connective tissue okay during that damage the underlying tissue having a mast cell everyone knows the mast cell in 11th you have studied in areolar type of tissues okay this mast cell get damage this damaged mast cell releases the histamine histamine is a vasodilator as you know it's a vasodilator which brings out the vasodilation okay as the blood vessels get dilate that, that means get big in size their diameter increases as the diameter get increased the blood flow increases to that side okay as the blood flow increases towards that side uh it shows redness and heat at that particular site redness and heat as you know swelling of the okay redness and pain, uh, redness and heat we feel okay as well as during that the capillary permeability also get increased because of that if the capillary permeability increases and here is the site of infection here is the site of infection then what happened the microba uh, the from the capillary the micro uh, macrophage cells squeeze out and they comes at the site of infection and the number of the cells get increased as the number of the cells get increased at this site the size this was the normal one but this is the swelled one this is the swelled one which shows a swelling which shows a swelling at that particular area okay so what happens because of this okay because of this the heparin get released what is released heparin okay this heparin and histamine both these both tries to uh, tries to repair shows a repairing mechanism they shows a repairing mechanism the damaged tissue as well as the damaged blood vessels those who are who get broken down okay they get repaired by this inflammatory response so inflammation is one of the barrier of innate immunity and uh, it releases histamine and heparin okay and uh, especially this histamine and heparin tries to cover or cure the damaged tissue as well as damaged cells okay tissues uh, sorry damaged tissues as well as damaged blood vessels are repaired by this inflammatory response and because of that only the inflammation is shown clear everyone okay as well as whatever the debris get formed at uh, the site of infection that means whatever the pus or uh, dead cells get formed uh, that that debris is removed by the phagocytic action by of the macrophage cells clear everyone now we are turning towards the next point uh, of the uh, barrier is the fever response is the fever response so fever as you know every person has its own body temperature and a normal adult human having a 37 degrees celsius as their body temperature how many 37 degrees celsius temperature normally hmm? some persons are having more that means 1 degree celsius is uh, normal body temperature in some people okay so our normal body temperature is 37 degrees celsius right so when any microbes uh, invades in our body at that time our macrophages uh 
secretes a secret secretion named as pyrogen. Okay, when microbes enters, how we shows a fever response? Okay, microbes enters at that time the macrophage gets stimulated. Macrophage cells releases. Releases. It releases. It releases the pyrogens. It releases the pyrogens for for meat. Carefully. Uh, this is a MCQ. Okay, pyrogens are released by the macrophage cells when uh, any microbes invades in our body. Uh, this pyrogen stimulates our it gives a stimulation to our hypothalamus. Everyone knows the hypothalamus, a part of the brain. Okay, hypothalamus. Uh, our hypothalamus gets stimulated, and in a result, the hypothalamus increases the whole body temperature. Increase our body temperature. It's a simple one. How we increase the body temperature? When microbes invade in our body, our macrophage releases the pyrogen. And this pyrogen, released pyrogen from the macrophage, stimulates our hypothalamus. And in a result, the hypothalamus increases our body temperature. Okay, so what happens during increased body temperature? As well as uh, interferon is also get secreted. Okay, pyrogen as well as uh, uh, in response to this, uh, interferon is also released. As you know, interferon is the antiviral uh, nature. Everyone knows hmm? the interferon. Okay, uh, so uh, as the body temperature increased, in an increased body temperature, any virus can't multiply can't multiply at the same time you know that the interferon also having antiviral property it stops the multiplication of virus previously we have studied right so uh, this is the fever response it is the antiviral uh, antiviral so when any microbes enters in our body any virus especially enters in our body our body increase the body temperature by increasing body temperature it tries to kill that virus okay so naturally uh, mild temperature if we having we don't uh, have to use a uh, uh, antibiotics okay and don't prefer the antibiotics as early as hmm? uh, so uh, nowadays uh, by considering the uh, today's condition we have to concern doctor immediately okay uh, so, uh, because in some persons, the innate immunity fails against the viruses. And you know that in COVID, uh, every individual shows a different uh, type of immune response against this, right? Uh, so, especially, uh, generally antiviral property, uh, it is shown by this, uh, by increasing the body temperature. Uh, we try to kill the microbes. The viruses can't sustain in an increased body temperature as we know. Uh, but related with the COVID, it is a different one. Okay, because it's sustained in a uh, high temperature. Uh, so that uh, we can't say anything about the... Uh, it is not true for all the viruses. Now I am quoting the sentence. It is not true for all the viruses. Some viruses sustain in an increased temperature also. So, and because of that only, nowadays the doctors are allowing us to take a water steam uh, to kill the, uh, if the virus enters in our nasal and throat region, uh, doctors are suggesting <coughs> that you have to take a water steam. Because of the water stream, what happened, what, that virus enters in our body, uh, the increased heat, which stimulates our respiratory passage, it stimulates our respiratory passage, and the respiratory passage secretes the 
chemical substances and that because of that chemical substances the virus get killed into the nozzle as well as in the throat region itself so everyone has should nowadays in a nowadays situation we have to use a water steam uh, twice a day okay to kill the microbes okay then the next one is the cellular factors in a innate immunity so what are the cellular factors in innate immunity especially especially in us innate immunity there are number of cells which works as an uh, phagocytic in nature um, especially our mast cells uh, then macrophage neutrophils nk cells natural killer cells uh, then then uh, then dendritic uh, cells okay um, we will study it in a, our next lecture so thank you very much